Deuteronomy means second law. And this is, uh, Deuteronomy is kind of a retelling of the first four books of the Bible. And what I want to do today is focus on the Ten Commandments. This is the second place where we find the Ten Commandments. The first is in Exodus 20. And what the Ten Commandments, Deuteronomy, and the Bible in general are trying to do is help us understand the law of what it means for human to be human and for God to be God. Is there something that we all share in common? Um, kind of a common law, if you will, about what it means to be human. Deuteronomy says, yes, there is. And this is exciting because it can help us understand what it means to be human. Now, and what it means for God to be God. So let's look at the Ten Commandments. Let's look at the First Commandment and the Tenth Commandment, the bookends um, of the Ten Commandments. The First Commandment, it starts off telling us about who God is. It says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt out of the land where you once lived as slaves. And this is telling us the essence of who God is, the one who stands with the victims. And the first commandment, um, kind of his commentary on this, it says, you must have no other gods besides me. Now we often think that this is God being jealous or angry or some kind of negative view about God. You must worship me alone. Don't worship any other gods. But the important thing is, is that this is the God who stands with the victims. There are other gods out there who don't stand with victims, who want to create victims. So what God is saying here is, no matter what you've heard about me, no matter what else you've heard about other gods, don't believe it. I am the one who set you free. I'm the one who seeks to set people free from oppression, the one who stands with the victims of the world and seeks to set them free. This is who God is at a fundamental level. Whatever else you hear, don't believe it. This is it. This is the law of who God is, Deuteronomy is telling us. Everything else is commentary. And the 10th commandment is commentary on this. It's a law of human relationships. It says, it says this, do not covet your neighbor's stuff. That's a paraphrase. Don't, don't desire your neighbor's stuff. And what happens here if we do? Well, let me give you a modern example. There's this show on MTV called Cribs, right? And it goes around and it follows a famous person um, and we get a tour of that person's house. And they have this huge house and these huge cars and this huge flat screen television. And I'm looking at this show, right? And I'm like, whoa, this is what it means to be successful. I want to be like Little Bow Wow. I mean, Little Bow Wow is 16 years old. And I'm like, how does he have all this stuff? I'm 30 and I have nothing like this. I wish I could be Little Bow Wow. And this is really what um, this trap of desires mimetic desire is getting at is that it's not about the objects it's not about the house it's not about the car it's not about the television it's about being the other it's about displacing the other and being little bow wow and deuteronomy is saying don't do that don't desire like this and what Deuteronomy tries to do is transform our desires so that we're not focused on the self, but we're focused, focused on the needs of the self and also focus on the needs of others. So it's trying to transform our desires so that we help the victims of the world, the ones who God stands with. So God stands with um, the non-victims, the powerful, in order to try to help the victims of the world so that there is a no one in need in our community. And this is what Deuteronomy is getting at in Deuteronomy chapter 15. It says, there should be no one needy among you. Don't, if somebody is in need, don't be tight-fisted. Give. Give out of the abundance that you have and help others. And so it's not that God is over and against the powerful. God is hoping for reconciliation between uh, human beings based on love and standing with one another in our um, in oppression in slavery be with one another and help one another provide for the needs of others don't be tight-fisted this is how Deuteronomy is 
telling us to be in relationship with one another. Um, and it even has the audacity to say that this is a law to help one another, to love one another, because this is what God does. This is who God is at a fundamental level. So uh, those are my thoughts on Deuteronomy. I'd love to hear what you have to think. Uh, see ya. Bye.